So you wanna stop saying no to these deep overstretched ends when you could be saying yes and making a lot more money and making a lot more people happy doing these types of repairs. I mean, we have the ability and the technology nowadays to be able to pull these off to a really high level and why not? You know, you're gonna save a lot of people's paint jobs and ultimately it just makes the industry better if you can pull off these miracles. So I wasn't going to dive too deep into the technology aspect or the, the machines behind us doing these types of repairs, but I feel that there is kind of a need to understand them in order for us to give a really high quality repair and allow us to charge what these types of repairs are worth. Because let's face it, they take a lot of time, effort, and skill to do really well. And I'll cover that more in a little bit. So this footage that you're seeing here is from a recent advanced paintless net repair training session where we get our students acquainted with fixing really deep stretched metal. You can see we're starting with a wider surface area tip just to get some of the dent up without causing any further damage. And then we kind of move into different types of tips. And with this hood material being aluminum, you definitely want to use something sharper, like a needle tip as you're seeing here to really isolate that little pinpoint section that you're trying to move. From there, you'll start to see us use some sharper knockdowns uh, just basically manipulating this to where it ultimately wants to sink back down because the metal is overstretched and we kind of have to aid it with uh, we're using kind of a dolly an or, or an off dolly technique here where we're just kind of aiding and keeping the metal up so we can kind of tap down and manipulate as much as we can while we have it in that high state. So the machine we're going to use uses electricity to basically run through an electrode and it has to be kind of dispersed into the panel and essentially arcing into the panel and we have to create a pathway for that electricity to flow and we do this with a ground just very similar to like hooking up a TIG welder um, it has to have some kind of a complete circuit and this is that loop we're going to be running here and once that electricity arcs into the panel it creates a lot of heat and that pinpoint heated area becomes a little bit softer and the surrounding perimeter metal is still cool and it creates kind of a shrinking effect on the overstretched metal. In a nutshell though, that thinner overstretched piece of sheet metal basically becomes shorter in length and a little bit thicker and it creates that tightening effect that you see after using the machine and tapping down the high area. Now I know you see me using the words like analog and digital. I don't want you to get confused. I essentially am just using this to demonstrate the kind of patterns that I use. Uh, in the beginning, one being the analog pattern, which is kind of a continuous pattern where you don't stop and you just kind of cross hatch, as opposed to a digital pattern, which is kind of light bumps or taps from the back, which we'll be using towards the end of the repair at a higher voltage for the most part. And this is just that. You're seeing uh, basically some taps. It's really hard to get to show up on the camera, so I kind of made some wider taps to the back sides. You can kind of see the lines being created. Um, this is actually a pretty cool little thing that we saw during a training session just to show you how much heat is going into that panel. You can see kind of that little trail that's being left. As you make several passes with the machine and the panel starting to show signs of really stiffening up, uh, you can usually light, lighten up on the knockdown work. I usually just take a kind of a lighter weight paddle and a VIP knockdown to really isolate that area. That panel is flat considering what it was. And for training purposes, that's all we really wanted to achieve there was to just flatten out the panel. Um, if you really wanna spend hours and hours on these types of dents, you certainly can. Um, but this one here, what we actually did was decided on using some lateral tension. Now, ideally you'd wanna have lateral tension going from all angles here, basically a multi-axis um, kind of lateral tension pull. And that would actually aid in, you know, a premature kind of oil can effect. Um, ultimately, you want to lift these dents up kind of uniformly in a sense, and that would definitely be beneficial. Came out great. So I will tell you, and I'll leave you with this and let you know that these types of repairs, with taking these types of repairs on, there always comes the potential risk of failure. And that's essentially how I kind of learned how to do this over the years. Uh, through failing but if you want to basically avoid a lot of the failure that comes with doing this type of work I'm actually going to be putting on a 
mini version or condensed version of my paintless dent repair advanced training during the PDR College Advanced Skills Seminar held in Duluth, Georgia. I would love to see you there. Um, I hope you can make it. If not, I offer the five-day advanced PDR training. You can go to my website at cfldentrepair.com and just go to the PDR training tab and fill out the contact form. I'd be glad to get back to you as soon as possible. I left out one little detail about these repairs. Never forget to replace the primer on the back side of that panel. Um, after all, we are trying to give a high quality repair and this is the way to do it. So thanks again for watching.